V-Ray is simply the best render engine out there. No question, no debate. Okay, actually there is a ton of debate around this. Lots of people like their real-time render engines better. Lots of people will quibble with me and say that Corona is better. But the fact is that actually a lot of these render engines have all the capabilities they need to make totally awesome and photorealistic renderings. So a lot of it comes down to personal preference after that. But V-Ray remains a widespread and widely used render engine, especially within the ArcViz community. But to become a true master of V-Ray, you need to fully understand a lot of its features. And some of these features are more advanced or lesser known. In this video, I'm gonna give you my pro tips on how to maximize V-Ray's capabilities with maybe some of those lesser known and more advanced techniques. These little things can make all the difference between a mediocre rendering and a truly epic one that really stands out from the crowd. So let's definitely get into them and check these techniques out. First, let's look at the scene I've been experimenting with. Then I'll share my tips for getting good results with it. I've been building an experiment scene over the last couple weeks. My strategy is to build out an entire interior space, every detail at high quality. Doing this opens up several possibilities for me. For one, I can easily generate animations of the space using Vantage, which I fully plan on doing for future videos. Second, I can export to Unreal Engine 5 and create a full VR walkthrough of the space, which will be so awesome and I definitely plan on doing this too. Stay tuned and subscribe to see how that one goes. The third thing and most important thing to this video is that it provides the ability to take virtual photos, aka renderings, in any direction within my space and get awesome results. I call this being a virtual photographer, and in the right 3D space, it is the most fun thing to do in 3D, in my opinion. So my first tip is this. Build out a complete scene with careful attention to detail. Remember this fact, detail is realism. Build in as much as you can to a scene, objects, materials, your space itself. They all have details. Being a good artist means knowing which ones to accentuate and which ones can be ignored. And of course, we need to consider bang for our buck too, because you can literally spend forever adding more and more detail to a scene. Which details will have the most impact? So we can add detail in the model. Cosmos is great for this because we have a wide selection from a vast library of very detailed models that can simply be dragged and dropped into our scene. But also resources like Design Connected or CGTrader.com can give you even more options for really detailed assets. Or for the stuff that needs to be custom like a lot of my scene, model in the detail yourself. Spend the time. And trust me, it does involve quite a bit of time. Being a 3D artist means always balancing where to put our efforts that will really impact the final result and which things can be ignored because although they might be in there in real life, they're not gonna really affect the realism or overall quality of our finished rendering. We need to add detail in the materials too. We don't live in a world of perfectly clean, tileable textures. So in this case, realism means imperfection. To get rid of super clean materials, it is easy to add grunge, reflection maps, glossiness maps, etc. To get rid of everything looking too copied, we have to get more creative. A good way to do this is with UVW mapping. Vary it from one object to another, even if they have the same material. And yes, sometimes you will have to do some UVW unwrapping. This is the best way to get truly customized textures for ultimate realism. Don't worry, it isn't as hard as it seems. I have a video breaking down how to do it with just the built-in 3ds Max tools check it out. I'll put a link in the description. So with all our detail added, we now have a complete scene 
and this is really advantageous to creating awesome renderings because it's hard to imagine the perfect shot before anything is built but once you have a complete scene modeled looking around within the space can easily inspire the perfect quote unquote composition working like this can also provide happy accidents having a complete scene built out even behind the camera means you will sometimes get very happy accidents. For example, the lamp behind the camera creates a perfect reflection on the wine glass in your shot. Or the lamp in the background creates a beautiful bouquet effect. These little things create interest and add realism. Master the V-Ray camera and its settings. Okay, yes, do this, but also study actual photography. Photography is a fantastic practice for making rad renderings. Now, translate that into V-Ray camera settings. I find mastering control of the depth of field to be most helpful. Of course, exposure is super important too. Virtual cameras are very nice because we have the ability to play with the settings however we want, but still get perfect exposure, no matter the lighting situation. This is a luxury we don't have in real life. Use this to your advantage. We can get crazy low aperture settings, highly exaggerated depth of field effects, and still perfect exposure. But don't go too crazy or else it will look fake. Matching what a real camera does means matching reality, and it will sell your renderings as photorealistic. This is a good time to take a break and remind you that if you need to dive deeper into V-Ray plus 3ds Max, I have the perfect course for you. 3ds Max plus V-Ray, ArcVis Pro in six hours. This is the perfect course for you if you want to see my entire process from beginning to end, my professional workflow. And if you already know that workflow well and you need to jump into some more advanced settings, you can buy my professional ArcVis bundle, 3ds Max and V-Ray Pro ArcVis bundle, which includes the previous mentioned course, but also my advanced interiors course, my advanced exteriors course, and my advanced 3D environments course. Right now, I'm offering this bundle at a ridiculous discount for my YouTube watchers, so check out the links in the description for details about that or any of my other courses. Now, back to my pro tips. Master the V-Ray frame buffer and render elements. I absolutely love the V-Ray frame buffer and all the control I can have there. In fact, I could almost completely replace Photoshop for post-processing in a lot of instances. But you have to know how to use it. Let's check it out. First, here are two render elements to enable that will make your control in the frame buffer way better. Those are Cryptomat and Lightmix. With these two render elements enabled, let's jump right into V-Ray frame buffer to see what we can do. I'll show how you can really enhance your renderings with the help of these channels, but we'll also look at some other effects that are found there that really help as well. Okay, here I am inside of a rendered scene. Well, this is a rendering of the scene I've been showing you, but here we have the frame buffer all set up how I want so we can have full control over how this is going to look as a finished image. So let's just jump in and see what kind of options we have. You guys know already probably that I love the light mix so much because it gives us full control over what the mood and general lighting of our scene is going to be. And you can see here we have a little bit more dark outside and a little more mood lighting going on. And that totally changes the image from if we had it in the middle of the day, right? For example, like this, if we put this up to one, now we have a daytime scene, and we could go in and turn down some of these other lights. You can see that it affects our lens effects too. You can turn the lens effects on and off, but these lens effects work based on how bright these lights are relative to the overall scene, kind of. What I like to do is kind of build it up from scratch and see what kind of results we can get. So if we just turned off all lights, turned on the day only so we could see what kind of effect it's having, we can see the lens effects going there there's a lot of bloom going on in this window maybe we could then turn this off now the lens effects is just automatically here but you have to enable it possibly and then we can just change the size and opacity of it 
So there you can see the size just went down. We can change the intensity too. Okay, now if you toggle it on and off, it's a lot more subtle. Okay, so lens effects is actually another huge thing in the frame buffer that you can do that adds realism to your scene. Okay, and of course you can control exposure, white balance. You can use a lookup table. I have that applied and it's just kind of lightening some of the darks here and applying a slight color to it. I have it set to 0 0.07 for the blending. If I put it to one, then it would totally change. Okay, but you can put apply any lookup table to it. You can put a filmic tone map on it, which just is adjusting like the overall contrast, curves, highlights, lowlights, all that stuff. So I have one of those applied, pretty subtle as well. White balance, you can change. Hue saturation, color balance, all the stuff you do in Photoshop, you can control in here just by adding the layer of it. And since we have the crypto mat on, we can do it for individual objects too. Okay, so we will get to that, but let's go back to the light mix for a second. So all our lights are turned off except for the day light source. If we want a mid midday type of scene, we can do this. We can even turn it up more to make it really bright, like a high key image. You can adjust the exposure. I like to usually have the highlight burn all the way up to one because otherwise it starts looking a little flat and dull, right? Don't be afraid to push some of the highlights to a very high level, possibly even blown out, like right in here. It's not necessarily a bad thing if you have a really bright image. Okay, so right there is a bright daylight scene. Let's go, let's try and achieve the, the more romantic scene again. Okay, so let's put it like this, 0.07. And then let's go through each light and see what kind of effect each one adds. Okay, so daylight source, our little pendants here. And then the actual light coming out of the pendants. These pendants over here. Let's look for the lens effects here and see if we turn them up really high intensity, we can see a little bit of glare there, but then we're going to have a lot of glare up here. It's not bad though. I kind of like that. Okay, and we're getting tiny bits of glare here. Very nice. We have some light shining up on the ceiling. We'll leave those pretty subtle. We could put them higher and make much brighter roof up there, but I don't really like that. Let's say 0.5-ish. Yeah, a soft glow up there. We have a lamp in the foreground that's putting off light. It's a little bit distracting in this particular situation, so maybe leave that off. We have some up lights on the ceiling too. Maybe two. Okay, the can lights. Now the lens flares are too much for those, right? So we could try and turn these down overall as lights, but we might have to adjust the lens flares too. More like that, okay. Add some more lights. I like these little highlights, these little uh, accent lights over here on the painting nice but i don't want them to be the focal point so not too bright that one's this is an interesting thing when you turn this on set to 50 to even be bright enough here in the light mix but it's causing a bunch of noise and stuff because it's a tiny light source trying to put off a bunch of light okay so let's just turn that one off to keep the noise away you can see kind of the things in your scene if you do it this way you can see what's adding a ton of noise and what isn't Okay, and then one last thing, the self-illumination. See, that's adding a ton of noise, but if I turn on self-illumination, you can see it's adding like a fog. It's also adding a bunch of noise, so it's not really working well here, but you can see that it adds fog. That's because I have V-Ray atmospheric perspective on, and it only works if there's a V-Ray sun in your scene but it basically adds depth and atmosphere to your scene. It adds fog that gets thicker as it goes far away. It's And it doesn't cost you much in render time. It's just a self-illumination effect. And you can change the color of it and things like that. So like if I take this and change the color of the fog, it's gonna make it look really blue and purpley outside, right? This is the fastest way to add a atmospheric perspective to your scene where as things go away from you, they get more hazy. So I like to use it in this interior part. It's not important, but it does change some things. Okay, I can just turn it off in this case. 
But that's just one other element of what you can do with V-Ray to add more realism. I personally like that effect. You set it in the environment effect, rendering, environment, V-Ray aerial perspective is what it's called. And it's basically just set up as default here with a little bit of color to it. And then you change the range of how far you can, how far the visibility is within the fog. Okay, so you can see how you can set up your scene, the mood, the lighting, exactly how you want using the light mix. And you can fine tune the lens effects because they are a post effect, right? So they can just be done after the fact with the frame buffer. And you can of course get your exposure just right too. So that's actually kind of cool, like that. Okay, so that's a totally different scene than if we were to do this again, right? That's a daytime scene. The other one is a kind of a, a low light evening scene. So boom, that easily you can completely change the look. And that means you don't have to render over and over and go and fine tune your lights and render each light to make sure it's at the exact right level. Okay, so I love light mix for that reason. Now let's look at a few of these other things in here and then we'll be done with it. Okay, I said that CryptoMat is one of the important channels that we want to use, and that's because we can apply any of these changes to a specific object only in our scene using the CryptoMat. So let's take a look at that. If we wanted to apply a color balance to only this wood, or maybe a hue saturation only to this wood, we can do that using the CryptoMat channel, which if we look at, we'll see CryptoMat, there is a different mask for each object in our scene. So if we go back to apply, let's say a hue saturation, it'll show up here. And if we adjust it now, it'll apply to our whole scene. So say that's how we want the wood to look, except it's affecting our whole scene and we don't want that to happen. Okay, well with the crypto mat on, it's easy to fix that. We can just go here and say crypto mat mask and then pick just our wood right there. And you can see that's rectangle 6,373, perfectly named. And we just go to the properties again. So now we have the mat and the properties. We can see there's a mask applied to this layer up here, just like in Photoshop. The mask is here based on the crypto mat. And now we can adjust the properties of just that one masked out area. So we can make it way more saturated like that. If we so desire, we can make it whatever color we want. Okay, I'm gonna use the hue as is and just maybe turn down the saturation just a little bit like that. Okay, so you can really fine tune in here using CryptoMat, using light mix, using all the different things in here and then just the things like lens effects and exposure, the regular Photoshop post-processing type stuff is all in here too. So what I want you to see is that with the frame buffer, you can do a lot. It is extremely powerful. Okay, and so that's my pro tip, that if you get really good at this, you can get really good at fine-tuning your image and making it look exactly how you want. And it feels creative and intuitive, right? Like you, are, you can just render your scene and it's not done after that. You have so much more control to enhance it still after the fact in post within the V-Ray frame buffer. I love that. I think it's great because I could go on and on trying to fine-tune the lighting of this, change the mood of this, just get all sorts of different feels going on just by staying within here and adjusting these things. So those are my tips. And of course, there are so much more. I could make a whole nother video about more professional tips, but those are the things that are standing out to me with the current project I'm working on and the things that I'm really liking. So integrate those in and see if your renderings get better. I bet they will. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. There's a lot more to come with this scene. So subscribe, hit the like button. Like I said, I'm eventually going to attempt to take this into Unreal Engine 5. And maybe I'll have some more V-Ray tips along the way if you guys are interested in that. Make sure to subscribe to not miss any of the stuff. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.